In this video, we're gonna be going over mail merge, AKA kind of document creation within Zoho CRM. So before I jump in, if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below because that really does help us out. And if you find that you end up needing a little bit of help setting this up in your system, uh, just head on over to zanata.com click on book a meeting and we'll be talking about how we can help out in no time. So I'm gonna do this tutorial from the perspective of the deals module, AKA opportunities or potentials, just because that's where we find this happens most often. Keep in mind, you can really do this from anywhere, from a contact, an account, a custom module, really entirely up to you. If we look at our deal record here, we've got a handful of fields that are gonna be relevant for this walkthrough. So the deal is linked up to an account and to a contact. We have this type here, which is new business. And then we have products sold, which is a table of products that shows up on this record. Here's where we're basically saying, hey, we're going to, you know, at the 50 or 10 hours of work and this number of items are going to go into, you know, fulfilling this particular engagement. From here, I'm going to jump into the setup and we're going to make our mail merge template. I'm not going to spend too much time focusing on making it pretty, where I'm going to show you how to do the field merging. I'll show you where those formatting options are. Uh, but that's, of course, going to be up to you to figure out exactly how you want your document to look. But under customization, we can jump into templates and then we can go to mail merge. And again, the mail merge here is really just a document template versus an email template, right? So this is something that you might send out for signature. This is like a contract, a proposal, maybe a quote or some type of bid. So here I'm going to add a new template. I will highlight that you actually can import like a Word document or like the export from Google Sheets. Um, it does a pretty good job of grabbing that formatting. You'll oftentimes need to make a tweak or two just to like, you know, get something centered or, you know, add some border padding. Um, but nonetheless, it does a pretty good job. In our case, though, we are going to start from scratch. Now, each of these mail merge templates is going to be associated to a particular module. Um, that comes into play in two ways. One, it will determine where it becomes available. And two, it'll identify which types of fields should show up as we're actually creating the template itself. Let's just call this our mail merge example template. You can put these into folders or subfolders, of course, but we'll go ahead and create this. Doing it this way, starting from a new template, it's just going to be basically a blank page, right? We can do whatever we want with this just pulls right up into Writer, right? Basically as an extension of Zoho CRM. So over here on the left, we've got a ton of different options. I'm gonna go through each of these tabs pretty quick just because most of this stuff until we get to the back half is, is kind of standard, you know, document management tool uh, functionality. So under format, we've got things like centering, you know, the font, the sizing of the font, um, being able to do your border padding, indents, line spacing, right? All that good stuff. Um, under insert, we actually do have a couple important fields for the purposes of this walkthrough. Up here, you know, inserting images, tables, drawings, able to insert really most different types of uh, media formats. Signature is a pretty important one that I am going to come back to as we actually put together the document. Um, but down here below, blank page, page breaks, all of that. Fields is another one that is pretty important. So under fields, you've really got two different types of fields that can be added. One are going to be auto fields like today's date or when the document was created. Those are pretty nice. We can, of course, add page numbers to a header or footer. Um, down below under dynamic fields is where a lot of the value is. Um, so under like merge fields, for example, here's where we can pull in from the deals. Again, I'll circle back to that one. Design is just a quick little section around some of the template options that you may choose, right? So you can choose, uh, you know, styles, you can set up your fonts, you can set up a color set that's going to apply across the entire document. Page setup, just at a high level, we're talking page sizing, indents, do we have columns, right, things like that. Do we want to have a little like border um, added to the, the outside? View, nothing important there. Under tools, you do have the ability to essentially, you know, set up spell check, add a dictionary, thesaurus, if you want to like swap out some words for synonyms. And then automate down here at the bottom is a really important one, which is essentially going to set up all those field mappings. And then what do we want to have happen when this document is merged? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the fields section and show how to add all of our various fields that we may need to this particular document. So under the merge fields, this is going to pull from that record that we chose 
when we were creating the template. So again, because this is a template for deals, it's gonna first show me those fields from the deal. What I do wanna highlight though, is if we were to let's say scroll down a little bit and get through the bottom of the deals section, you'll start seeing these other modules, right? So for example, accounts. Now, the reason that we can pull from accounts is because it is looked up by the deal, right? So because we know that this deal is associated to this single account, we can actually pull fields from that particular account. And so maybe we wanna have like a prepared for section and we can add the company name just by clicking on account name. If I scroll down a little bit, we'll see that we'll also have the ability to pull from our contact. So I can add, you know, their full name. And then maybe I wanna add like, you know, their email address or something like that, just to identify exactly who they are. And so all of these will actually just come directly from those related records to the deal. Um, really nice because what that means is I don't need to write some type of script, right? That's gonna pull the email address into a field in this record, right? I'm just able to know that because I've selected that contact, it's their data that's going to actually come in and add itself to the record. Now let's go and add a section for something like our engagement specifics. This data is gonna primarily come from the deal itself. And so here, maybe we'll command, and I'm just gonna, you know, command B and bold these up real quick. And underneath this, now I can start adding some specific information about this deal. So maybe I wanna add like the deal name, if that's something that's descriptive for you. Maybe I can add like the total for this deal. We can add the, you know, salesperson or their primary contact just by pulling from the owner field. Make sure I had my colon and a space there. And then let's say we wanna actually take this subform and add this. We can actually do that. So within this record, I can jump into subforms. Maybe we wanna add a header here called, you know, service information. Obviously not the prettiest document as I'm making it right now. But what we're doing here is essentially adding what they'll call a repeating block where I'm saying, hey, let me add a row and a table that's just gonna match what this subform is in my deal record. Now, you do wanna be really intentional as you add these to make sure that we, um, we select and order the fields appropriately. Um, now, we can choose exactly how we want this to look. So if we go into this insert repeat region, we can choose, hey, we wanna just insert this as is. We can insert it as a table. We can insert it as a table with a column, right? Rather than repeating rows, we're repeating columns. Um, or you can actually repeat within a cell. We're gonna insert it as a table with rows for each of these because that's kind of my preference on how these would be formatted. And so with our table added, there are a couple things to be aware of. So we'll see this little, the top row does not have this orange outline where the bottom does. So what that orange outline means is that this is the part that's going to repeat for each row that's actually in that subform. So up here above is where I'd actually type my column names. So things like product name, let's say our quantity and our total. And then within these repeating blocks, if I click this plus, now we'll see I can actually pull directly from that record, right? So now I can say our quantity and then our line total. Now here as well, if you wanted to add like another column, maybe for like unit price, we can do that just through this little UI. And then here, maybe I wanna like unbold some of these, um, which I can just do using some keyboard commands um, just to make the document look nice. So we'll just do that just so that everything is normalized. So now, last but not least, let's see how we would actually set this up such that we're able to send it out for a signature to our client. So here down below, what I can do is I'll just do some underscores here to essentially add a signature line. I'll add some more, and then we can add a signature date. Then over on the left-hand side in our field section, we can add our signer fields. So here, this actually comes directly via an integration with Zoho Sign. We can add as many signers as we'd like. In this case, we're just gonna have the one, and then we can just click into the record, 
click on signature, and then add them wherever we would like. Now it looks like it's not going to want those little underlines, which is totally fine. Do our sign date, and then we'll just delete those. So here, now I have a document that can be sent out to a person with their information on it, with the specific info of the deal, as well as all of the products and services that have been selected for that particular deal. So again, of course, you're going to want to come in here, do some design, make it pretty, right? Add your own personal touch and formatting to it. But functionally, it really is just this simple to create a merge document, where as long as we've got these fields in there, all of our data will flow in appropriately. So let's actually see how this looks like in practice. So here I'm within a deal. We're in this proposal stage. We're ready to send out the document. What we'll need to do is come under the little three dots here for more options and click on Mail Merge. Then we can choose our template that should be merged and, and prepared for sending. So we're going to use this example that we just created. This is going to open up in the writer. I do want to highlight a little pro tip. Um, if you don't see this pop-up occur, check your pop-up blocker. It does get caught pretty often there as it's popping up a new window. Now, what you'll see here is that the document is not yet merged. That's because over here on the left, we can go ahead and choose what we want to do. I'm going to do this merge and send for sign collection, or you can do merge as a new document, kind of the same thing at the end of the day. But keep in mind that you can merge and save, merge an email. You can actually trigger custom functions submit it for approval. There's there's a ton of different things that we can do here on the back end when we're actually running a document merge. I'm just going to merge it as a new document. That's normally what I do, and I'll show you why. So here, now I'll run the merge. Now it's actually going to pull from that deal that I've selected, basically where I had initiated this process, and it's going to create a document that's actually pulled in all of that data from my record, right? So now I see this is a document prepared for Zanata, for this person with this email address. Here's the name of it. Here's the total amount. And the salesperson that you're working with is admin user. We've got our service information with our products. And then we have that ability to sign here down at the bottom. Now, one thing I will add is that doing it in this method means I can make any edits to this document before I actually send it out. Now, keep in mind, that can be a good thing or a bad thing, right? So in some cases, you might want to uh, run this process where you're going to auto merge into a PDF, right? Just to eliminate any opportunity to make adjustments. Um, in our case, a lot of the times we do find that it can be valuable to have this step where you can make a tweak. Maybe you want to bold a certain thing like, hey, client, you know, this is the main thing we're going to be doing. But once this document has been created and merged, we can go up into this compose section and jump into distribute. And now you can distribute this a lot of different ways. I mean, you can publish it straight through a website. You can email it out. Um, you can download it and, you know, do whatever you'd like with it as a PDF, a docx, really whatever your preference is there. In our case, we're going to upload this to sign services because, again, that's kind of the use case for this document. So here, if I click sign and upload, all it's going to do is run in the background and basically upload this document into Zoho Sign. Um, including those signature fields. So now over in Zoho Sign, all I need to do is add that contact information. Their name and email address. You can come in and rename this if you want. I'll oftentimes get rid of this like ZDoc merged, right? Then I can click continue and we are ready to send it directly out. Nice thing here, it does give you that opportunity to double check and make sure that the signature fields are assigned to the right person. Then all you'll need to do is click send and it is a signable document directly sent out to your client. So overall, pretty simple process. We do find that people save a ton of time doing it this way. A lot of the times when we engage with a new client, they might be running a process like this directly in something like Microsoft Word, which is just a much more painful and end around way to do it. And so we can build it just directly here into the CRM for them. So I think that will cover it here for the mail merge walkthrough today. I really do hope that you found this video useful. If you did, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Uh, drop any comments down in the comments section. Let us know if you have any feedback, questions, additional video requests. Um, and with that, we'll wrap up. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.